Hey everyone, welcome to the next 5 minutes or less video. This video is going to be on the water cycle. It's essentially the recycling process that all water goes through on planet Earth. So here we go. The first thing we're going to talk about is evaporation. And you probably heard about this. This is a phase change. And what happens is liquid water that's found in ocean, lakes, rivers, and streams gets heated up. And when it gets heated up enough, the molecules get excited and they heat up and they spread out and they eventually evaporate, turning into gas. So this is the process of liquid turning into gas. This little uh, picture down here shows it pretty well. The liquid is going to go up into the sky. That's the first step of the water cycle. Now, you probably may have guessed this, but most of the water that goes up into the air from evaporation is going to come from the ocean because it's such a vast and gigantic body of water with nothing really blocking it. So the sun just heats it up all day and it ends up evaporating up. The second is going to be called transpiration. Now this is another way for water to get up into the sky. What ends up happening here is that plants give off water droplets from their leaves and when those water droplets sit on the leaf, like in this picture here, eventually that gets heated up and goes up and evaporates just as the water from the ocean. So we do take into consideration the water that comes out of the plant leaves. The next one is going to be condensation. So what ends up happening, once that water goes into the air from the ocean, it's going to cool. And once it cools down enough, it's going to eventually go from gas into liquid. And those little water droplets that are created from that process of cooling down land on little dust particles in the sky, like this. They all go around a little dust particle, and eventually, that water droplet grows and grows and grows. And this is going to be what we call a cloud. So a cloud is just a, literally a lot of water droplets suspended on little dust particles. Now eventually those water droplets get too big and the dust particle can't hold that amount of water so it ends up falling and that's where you get like your precipitation like rain, snow, sleet, or hail. If you get cloud formation or condensation at low elevation, that's going to be what we call fog. So it's like a cloud on the ground. When you see a dark cloud, the reason that it's dark is because it's actually so much liquid water inside of it that the light can't really get through it. So that's what you envision as a dark cloud. And you're right that that normally signifies rain because those raindrops get so, so, so heavy. So they eventually are going to fall. And then you get precipitation. So this is going to be water released from those clouds, and it's going to bring all that water back down to the earth. There's four different types. So you can have it come down as rain, snow, sleet, or hail, and that's going to be dependent on what the atmospheric conditions are and the temperature outside. Once that rainwater hits the ground, or the snow, or the sleet, or the hail, and ends up melting, it actually seeps through the ground, as you can see here. and the ground's like a sponge and it soaks it up and it starts pooling underground and we call this groundwater. It's water that's stored underground and we actually end up pumping this up and, and using it. But the process of the water soaking through the ground is called infiltration. It infiltrates through the dirt like a sponge. It soaks downward. Now, sometimes the ground is too soaked to accept any more water. So you're going to get the process called runoff. This is like flooding, you can think of it. If the water can't get into the ground, it's just going to run off to the lowest elevation possible. So this is eventually going to lead into the, like, the oceans nearby, the lakes nearby, the rivers nearby. Maybe goes into like a sewer system and then gets reverted into another direction. But runoff is also very important. So it sort of looks like this. And sometimes there's factors that do cause a lot of runoff, like to be more than usual. If we get a huge rainstorm and the ground can't absorb that much at one time, or if you get a lot of snow and then it all melts at one time, there's going to be a lot of water. Or if you pave over a surface of, of grass that's normally there to soak up the water, if it's paved, it's not going to be able to soak it up. So that's the water cycle in five minutes or less. I hope you found that useful, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.